There she is. <laughs> I tell you, things happen in this technical world. Things, things happen in this technical world. And sometimes we never know how it may turn out. But right now, I do. This is going to be good. Because right now, everybody is getting what they want. They wanted me to make sure not to deep, take a deep dive into this book in the first segment because some of them were busy. <laughs> so I got a lot of people like right before the show. And I was like, I don't, I don't roll that way. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I said, no, I can't do that. So that's why the first segment, and some of you have wrote me, you don't know this, Tracy, but I'm just giving you a heads up. They, they wrote me and were like, okay, the first segment, you got to do the talking. You got to, you know, get into the book, the second segment. I was going like, okay, nobody directs the show but me. <laughs> so, it's, like, it's my show. And uh, the diva of the day is Tracy. Tracy is here, and she is running the show. I am the man in the booth for her. This second segment is everybody wants this. So I want you to just go ahead and take, uh, take over. Uh, I'm going to start off by saying, again, the title of the book is Divorcing a Narcissist. This is not an infomercial, but it is as far as I'm concerned, because I'm promoting this puppy like mad. <laughs> um, so you guys can take that any way you want. People who are new here, uh, I'm giving you a chance to come on. That's why I'm still talking. Leave no contact. Go ghost. Thank you. Everybody else is here. Uh, I see you secure babies. I saw your wave out. Your turn is coming soon on the show. Uh, I give you enough time. Tracy, the floor, the show, a slice of Tracy is now on Narc Abuse TV. Please talk about your book. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me back. It's so awesome. I was really worried about talking for two hours, but you were right. It went oh, pretty thanks. darn fast. Um, and we're only halfway there, but um, I'm so honored to be talking about this because it is truly a labor of love that I have put all of. Um, we put out surveys on my website, on my Facebook, where people submitted their stories for what they went through. And I wanted, just like when I make a YouTube video, I wanted people to see the, the, the tricks that were pulled on others so that they could avoid them and not live in fear of them. For mm -hmm. if I had known some of these tricks, I wouldn't have reacted the same way that I did. I would have gone, oh, I see what they're doing. And it wouldn't have had the emotional juice that took me mm -hmm. down so far. So my goal was to put together lots of stories lots of tips, lots of strategies that I talk to and work with my clients for, and, and just the lessons that they've learned from, you know, just how to get through this emotionally, to the court system, to what to expect with lawyers. There's so mm -hmm. many intricate parts of this, and, and it it's, starts with understanding that, that you are a victim. For those of the, the people out there in, in TV land here, if you would, it's kind of cool <laughs> to say that, um, but if we are stuck and going, am I the narcissist? We are mm -hmm. still not understanding that this was done to us. That yes, we have accountability. Yes, we well, have our own wounds we have to heal. But at okay. the same time, like somebody did this bad behavior to you and now you are getting a divorce and the dream mm -hmm. that you thought you had is suddenly gone. And so, um, you know, to understand, oh, this is what gaslighting is. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. Having the, the verbiage is the most important thing because like we talked about in the last hour, if we don't have that vocabulary, we are still holding on to them versus when we see it and go, okay, now I can start to heal. Now I can get mm -hmm. through this long divorce process. The verbiage is very important then because, you, again, you have mentioned that multiple times, a total of three that I can think of. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> um, the verbiage is important because then we're able to navigate better. Is that what you're saying? So we get a deeper meaning is what you're saying? Right. If, if we don't understand that we were gaslit and all these lies and false allegations have the power over us, how could they tell a lie like that about me? They know I'm a good mother instead gotcha. of going, they're gaslighting me because they gaslight the most powerful part about me. So if they're saying I'm a bad mother, then I'm a good mother. And if we get to that point of having that um, language to understand exactly mm -hmm. what they're doing and why we can turn off some of that emotional charge that keeps us stuck in, in the hamster wheel. Okay, so turning off that emotional 
charge is very important because if I'm just, again, correct me because you're the specialist. I'm just the co-host. If, 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 if we turn off the emotional charge and all of a sudden we're not running on that, we're not running on that charge, that, that up and down emotional charge, we start to find some type of emotional stability to move forward. And technically, I'm going to go back to something you said in the first segment that I have on my notes over here. I looked at in between. We're going to go back to, we're, rather, we're going, to, we're going to recognize we need to get away because we're not living off that emotional charge that they're feeding us with the lies, the gaslighting. It starts to make sense then yeah, that we course. can make a, a decision. And it, and it empowers you when you have the verbiage. That's why we watch YouTube videos. That's why we're on your channel and watching Narc Abuse TV, right, is to learn more so that it can't mm -hmm. have the same power. When we don't have the words and we don't know what no contact is and we don't know what flying monkeys are and we don't know all of these things, mm -hmm. then we are sitting here going, why are they telling all my friends and my family that I'm a terrible mother? And it just... Yeah. It keeps you on that hamster wheel of emotional, like, instability. And when you go, oh, they're, like, listening to that lie, and mm -hmm. I don't have to keep them in my life right now because uh, of the lying monkey, then uh, you can go, it doesn't, right. it doesn't hurt as much because you're seeing that they are sometimes being manipulated as well. Not all flying monkeys. Some of them are just jerks. But, right. you know, the narcissist, like they have, evaluated us in the beginning they've evaluated everybody in our circle so mm -hmm. that our friends and our family they know who is going to be the weak link that can get to you and be a flying monkey okay time out time out oh, did you oh, just say they evaluated everybody in our circle did you just say that oh of course they i'm do. so writing that down that is okay yeah because they've essentially came in to scout the land out to see which direction they're going to go in when they make their exit. Oh my goodness, I love it. I, I love prop, period. Okay, I'm still going to get one for my show. That is so cool. And you know That's what? a flying monkey. And you Wait, you got to show it again. Arm, Everybody's got to see it again. If you pull his arm, he flies, and when he crashes into something, <laughs> he screams. Look at the hearts on the screen. They love that. Love oh, do you at least sell that? Where can people find that? Any idea? <laughs> on flying monkey okay everybody we're gonna do a flying monkey show on this network i promise you it's coming we're gonna everybody's gonna have to get one i'm gonna you give everybody so enough time right, you have so oh man props right, is the name of this this network wild, that is I, too funny I what you got the wrong size oh my goodness it's like, Whoa, and then that is so cool carrot, oh that is so cool to tempt you to whatever you right want. Bait you, right? Whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting so much love across the screen right now. They they love this. They said so Anne says, I need one with a bunch of hearts. That is so cool. That is you know, because you're right. The person use me. I would need to know who to put in what category, but I can't put them in that category if I'm thinking they're a trusted friend, but they're really a flying monkey. They're scouting they're scout they're doing some scouting for the narc. So they can get information. Uh, you need a goalpost. <laughs> they move them. That's pretty good. I like that awesome. one. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, um, so uh, leave no leave no contact. Go ghost. It says that they love it too. Everybody's cracking up. Uh, you, thank you for doing that. When, when we talk about the book, though, when we focus in on the book, it breaks down, or in other words, gives tips and strategies to help us navigate what we're dealing with. Somebody says they're buying one. Okay, the book and hopefully the, the Flying Monkey as well, but mainly the book too. And, uh, but the artwork in the book is quite impressive. Uh, the things that I'm looking at here. Uh, now, did you sit down and draw all of this? No, but one of the <laughs> girls in my support group down in Denver um, did all the drawings. And okay. again, she's a survivor and talented artist it was amazing yeah I would be like this is what this chapter is about and she would just render something and wow we're, we're putting out on instagram like she actually did screenshots of her sketching them so those are being put out wow. on instagram so yeah 
Yeah, some of the book starts off with saying that divorce is a game to a narcissist. And so we brought the game theme in. Oh, cool. This is the, the, you know, the chess sets and the the money and the baby and the bank and all of that. So it starts off by understanding that you are a pawn in their game. And so Uh they're going to try to, if, if, if they might try to get money from you, they might try to take the kids from you. You're a pawn. And so to understand that part is a big part of healing, right? Again, just like knowing you're a victim is to knowing that this is a game to them. And you have to be a little bit more on guard because they're going to try a lot of stuff that isn't really fun. And it's, it's quite abusive for you. Um, the next, and this is not in order. I just pulled out three when you said, yeah. you were going to mm-hmm. them, but uh-huh. this is the uh, detective stage where we are Whoa. really looking at all of the things in our life and putting the pieces together, right? If we don't become a detective in the beginning to understand okay. what was done, mm-hmm. how to find our money, where they're hiding things, like, so many people come onto my coaching screen and just be like, I don't know what we have. He would never let me see the money yep. or she yep. did this. And, and so understanding mm-hmm. what all the pieces are. And often that becomes the second life, the cheating, the affairs, sometimes a whole second family that people are learning about, learning that they've been hiding money for 20 years. Yeah. Um, I've heard that. I've actually literally heard that. It yeah. blew my mind. It actually blew my mind when one lady told me she was married over 40 some odd years and she never knew. He had an entire fund of money, let alone life. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't just trying to keep that on the side. He was building that to leave her. Oh, yeah. And she just happened to find that out that I he was going to build and going to leave her with Bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That's, Unbelievable. That's, that's like the low line of what they do. But I have a girl in the book that I quoted that for the 27 years she was married to him, mm-hmm. th- she thought they were poor. If she spent more than $50 a week on oh, groceries for, for the family, he would make her go back to the grocery store and return them. And no so way. she lived in fear. And when she actually started the divorce, she thought she was poor. And she found out that their estate was worth tens of millions of dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. See, see that, see that, that kind of stuff. Just, I'm literally speechless. I, I'm profoundly speechless when people do that. Your book sheds light that these stories, like this one, are, are there for people to start to recognize. This is not a well. They're in it. They're being used as a pawn, but this is not a game. This is their life that this person is, is doing something to. Right. What are some other parts of the book that you can highlight to us now? Well, you know, we, we talk about how to prepare. Certainly all the tricks are in there. We break them down, financial mm-hmm. tricks, tricks with your kids, tricks in the court, yep. you know, all mm-hmm. of these sort of things we break down and we have hundreds of survivor stories. And that was a challenge because I, I put it out there and I'd get like seven pages without a paragraph or a period. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, Okay, now I've got to org- that was only one person, right? You're like, ah, oh, you know, like, <laughs> what was the lesson? But simple things right. that you can learn from other people. For example, like, you know, somebody went, I came home and all the electricity was turned off in the house and my children and I froze all night. Well, lesson there is as soon as he gets out or she gets out, put the electricity in your name so that yeah, can- yeah. The same thing with phones. It's how do we protect mm-hmm. ourselves? Um, I've got a whole bunch of sections on having difficult conversations not only with the narcissist, but with your friends, who to trust and how to craft the right kind of story. Because when we're telling our story about the divorce, Mm -hmm. we have to, I I tell people the three bucket theory is you you delegate your friends into three buckets. The neighbors and the people at church might not need to know as much as some of the other friends in your life. So if you craft a story for the, say, more insignificant friends, the church friends and the work friends, and you craft it and go, you know what? We're just, you know, we grew apart after all these years. I'm going to be fine. Thanks. Right. Instead of Mm. like, oh my God, you're not going to believe what happened. Yeah. Go to the church person or the work person with all of that drama. Like it could get spread like wildfire through church or work. And, you know, it's not going to help you because it's going to re-trigger you because now 30 people from church right. call you yeah, up. Yeah, so if right. you just go, 
they don't need to know it yet. They don't need to know all the drama. They don't need to know all the stages and things I'm going through. And you craft it and you pick the next level of people. Your besties can hear everything if they're safe. But if you have friends on the list that perhaps are like, oh, everybody gets a divorce, get over it. Yeah. You know, you'll be fine. He's not really that mean. I always loved him. They go down a bucket. We do okay, not God. give them any more information, no matter where they sat in the, you know, you could have a bestie that says stuff like that. And yeah. you have to move them down to a place where, you know, this is not okay. And you're mm -hmm. in this bucket now, and I'm just going to give you the bare minimum facts. Mm -hmm. Right, because the last thing you need is somebody else kicking your wound after the narcissist has already exploited it and and kept pouring salt on it, as it were. Uh, so you, so the book goes into that part, right? It 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 gives. Uh, um, I'm being nice because I read certain things in there. <laughs> so, so it really breaks down ways that we can communicate with people like that. Yeah. What I'll give it away is the most much of the book, you guys. That's what I'm doing right now. So, so, so what else? What else did you want to highlight to us? You know what? One of the biggest mistakes I see, which is I think the million dollar prize in the book, it yeah. literally is will save you thousands and thousands of dollars to understand this. That a normal divorce decree in the end says, "Daddy pays for college." Mm -hmm. um, it says the house will be sold and split between them. Um, and those seem like very reasonable, normal divorce mm -hmm. lines. And you go, yay, college is covered. I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. Until such time, and I, again, have examples of this in the book, but until such time that your kid gets into college and they go, well, I really was only thinking community college. I'm sorry they got into Brown. I'm not paying, right? Wow. And what happened in that particular case in the book was the mother had to take the husband back to court to try to get him to pay for Brown. And they were very wealthy, so it wasn't that. Um, but because she had to take him back, that was $20,000 in uh, fees because it wasn't defined. If it's called wasn't discussed ahead of time. wasn't discussed ahead of time. And it has to be in, in writing. This is a legal well, contract. Well, yeah, right. Right? So yeah. if yeah. daddy pays for college, and we'll use that, not nothing against the girls or the guys, but... Um, daddy pays for college. To what level? Is there a budget? Is there a time frame? Does that include books? Does that include housing? Does that include food? You have to define it because I have seen them go, it only said I had to pay for college. So here's the tuition. You're on your own to fly them across the country. Or right, something. right, right. If you don't mm -hmm. define it and look at that sort of thing, even mm -hmm. on parenting plans, think about this as a gray area. I call it the gray areas of the divorce decree. But mm -hmm. when if you look at it and say, you know, Christmas, you get them this year, I get them next year. Mm -hmm. That seems very right. logical. Mm -hmm. And I've, yeah. had, I've had narcissists go, well, I picked them up on Christmas Eve, and I'm not giving them back till the end of January vacation. Worry, wow. about, bye. It yeah. wasn't defined. And then they go, sure, take me back to court. What are you going to do about it? Spend 20000 Ha ha. Right? So you define, like a child, you know, Christmas starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 7 a.m. the right. next morning, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you need to define it or they will like take that gray area and manipulate you to the point of having to pay and pay and pay more legal fees. I went to contempt of court with a client who's in the book. That's why I can talk mm -hmm. about them. Um, mm -hmm. And her, her mm -hmm. um, de decree said house gets sold. She gets $300,000 and whatever. I was in court two years later. She had also spent $20,000 in motion after motion to get him to try to do it. So you're talking about motions to comply, motions to compel, and motions well, of contempt. $20,000, and her lawyer sat there on the stand and asked the judge, judge, he was not in compliance. He's like breaking the law here. He was supposed to do this two years ago. What do we do? Can you pay for her, make him pay for her legal fees? And the judge said, I wish I could, but it wasn't in the original decree. Wow. So I have verbiage in there that was crafted by a lawyer specifically for this to make sure that if they don't comply with all the stuff that is in the legal document, mm -hmm. you don't have to fight them when they take them for two weeks at Christmas and they weren't supposed to. You can go Get it all cleared up. Get it cleared up with the right verbiage in the first place so that you don't have to deal with it later. Mm -hmm. So don't be in a rush. Don't be overwhelmed by fear. You're just going to have to work through it because it's going to save you definitely money. Oh, 
but a lot of exasperation in in the future. Um, yeah, I've never thought of that. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out something that I noticed uh, when I was looking at the book uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, power and strength: the discard versus the discarder. Um, may I please? I'm just gonna touch on this. I'm not giving away the whole book. You people better get this book. You better get this book. Don't be trying to get free on my TV network. Uh, you better go spend the money. Don't be a cheapskate. Don't embarrass me in front of Tracy. Go spend your money. spend the money. But here it says the decision to leave your spouse is never easy. The very idea of getting away can be hard to conceive because with this type of abuse, you can lose your confidence. People often lose their confidence and be overwhelmed when they become well the victim of someone else betraying them. And they could get, I'm, I'm touching on something that happened yesterday on the show. One guy was saying that he gets reeled back in, as it were, sucked back in from this female narcissist that he was dealing with. And a number of the people on the show were all agreeing because they went through the same thing. Do I become the discarder? Do I become, get discarded? What? Well, the, the, the reason I put that in, in the very beginning of the book, discarder and hmm. discarded, is because that's a stage of, of the abuse, right? To be discarded. Okay. We, Right. Mm -hmm. But it's also because it's a different thing. If you are the one that decided on the divorce, oh, you okay. already had time to process the fact and sort of grieve it before you even told them. You had time to make plans. If you are the discarded, your life is imploded. You are no plan. There and yeah, you're not ready. For thought and it's it's blindsided, right? So to understand that the, the path of divorce is quite different for someone that chose it. These are the things they've got to do. But for someone that didn't choose it and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even necessarily want it, they have to understand the rules are different. But they're not the rules, but sort of the, the, the way that it's going to present. You're going mm -hmm. to get more like emotionally dysregulated because this isn't what you wanted. Oh, no, I don't want to be divorced, right? And you're in denial a little bit of the grieving process. But if you were the one who decided on it, you have much more power. And therefore, some of the things in the book, you know, it's not going to happen to you. So it's sort of understand that there's mm -hmm. two different paths here, um, depending on if you chose or they chose. If, if um, an individual finds themselves that the narcissist has chosen it, they pretty much need to be ready for a battle is what I'm hearing. Uh, uh, Right. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, how can the book help someone be mindful outside of some of the things we mentioned, saving them money and other things? What are some other things that can help them be ready if this is this this bomb is dropped on them? Well, to understand that you have much more power than the narcissist is going to tell you. You know, ah, gaslighting in that's divorce. very important. I like that. Okay, Guess go ahead. In divorce is like out of control. You know, they have already groomed the victim, sort of, the, the, the mm -hmm. discarded. Um, mm -hmm. and they have already groomed them to go, if you divorce me, you'll get nothing. If you divorce me, I'm taking the kids. If you divorce me, blankety blank, right? And right. so it puts the, the, the victim in this like fight or flight mode. And you think, I can't divorce them because they'll take the kids. I'll never see my children. I'll be homeless. That's a big one they like to throw out there, right? So if you look at that and you look at that as gaslighting and go, mm -hmm. wait, there's no truth to that. In fact, I've been married for 30 years and yes, I didn't work. And for 30 years, she told me, he told me that I would have nowhere to live and I'm not entitled to anything yeah. because I was the stay at home mom to understand mm -hmm. your rights that no, after 30 years, man, you get like alimony for life and all kinds of stuff. After 10 years, you can get half of their social security and most lawyers won't even tell you that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's learning what your rights are, and you'll find a lot of that stuff in there is to here's how we get through this. So um, if the narcissist walks out and they're, they weren't the breadwinner, they're still in a position to take money from the victim? Oh, so often, so, so often. So the tables are turned in the two scenarios with who has money and who doesn't um, because the one who has money, if it's the victim, 
um, it almost becomes their entitlement to your house, your life, you know, wow. everything that you've saved, your retirement. And sometimes it's, I have a lady that just completed her divorce and she knew him for two months, married him for two months. And you're going to break him, my heart. Divorced him for a year. And he was like, thought he was entitled to everything that was hers. Wow. And thankfully, she had me and we worked on it and she was empowered to, to kind of get through these, like, he's going after my retirement. Okay, what do we do? Right? Bang, bang, bang. And so learning to not panic when that happens because okay. technically right. that's how you get stronger. Okay. So please, everybody, get the book. But you just made a very fine point. Learning not to panic. Uh, I've received panic messages from people and this and that and what they want to see on the show. But I, you just made me think of something. It's important for them not to panic, but they, but an individual would need to make sure they get some assistance. They have a foundation, maybe the book, they can talk with you. They, they can uh, maybe, if, if need be, hey, reach out, get some coaching, whatever it may be that you need to do with Tracy, she's available to you. But don't panic. Start looking into resources that can help you because, they're going for blood, right? They're essentially going for blood. They're going for blood. They're going to take you down. And when you are isolated from family and friends, as many mm -hmm. victims mm -hmm. are, um, mm -hmm. it becomes very hopeless. But when you start to talk to, we talked about support groups in the beginning, when you start to talk about um, like this with others that get it, like suddenly you're just not alone anymore and you have that support. So support groups um, and just finding people that understand. Uh, I'm uh, looking at your book and I'm uh, picking certain things that I've highlighted. Uh, so you're getting pieces, as it were, I call it a slice of Tracy today. But to get the full measure of Tracy, you need to go to her Instagram page uh, at Tracy A. Malone. Uh, and you need to go to the website uh, for the book. Again, please, the website for the book so everybody can pre-order and get on a list to make sure they get the book. And, you know, you might get a bracelet. If you saw the first segment, there were some nice-looking bracelets that she got and a whole bunch of other things. Oh, there, there they are, the bracelets as well. Go ahead, uh, your, uh, the page for the book. Uh, DivorcingYourNarcissistBook.com Okay. Um, the Secret Sauces. Protect to add to your decree. Secret sauces. That's, uh, what we so, just, that's what we just mentioned was I call yeah. it the what if they don't clause. Like what if they don't sell the house mm -hmm. on time? What if they don't pay me what they were supposed to give me? What if they don't do this? That's the secret sauce because if we don't put that in, your legal abuse and post-divorce abuse will continue yeah. legally for life. It will, it, it's, it's a never ending thing. They won't go away unless they finally decide there's nothing left of you or of me or of another person and then they'll move on. Or is this a reoccurring nightmare? I, I think the co-parenting world for people is the nightmare. Mm -hmm. That's where they really? might have another 15 years of having to wow. deal with this person. That's true. And, yeah. And that is a, 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 like a very, very hard thing to get through. You've got to learn a lot of new school skills, a lot of um, communication skills to not trigger them so that you can keep the peace and not be in you know, trauma all the time. But um, the other parts of it is learning that you had the power all along, just like in the Wizard of Oz. Like, you really did have the power all along. <laughs> yeah, all along. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, for some people, it is like the Wizard of Oz for them, their life, because it seems like it's never ending. And there is no yellow brick road. But in your book, you have narcissistic abuse terminology. I saw that. That was, like, so cool. You got to get the book, everybody. Oh, they're writing to you on the screen. Uh, it says, oh, my God, I so need this. Uh, still being married to a highly destructive, controlling narc. Uh, that's got me now isolated after he purpose, purposefully, uh, purposely rather, made me disabled to further control me. Uh, I need help seriously. That's from Fadwa. Uh, so Fadwa, hope you enjoy the book. Uh, get a chance to put your hands on it. Uh, I see the evolution of two minds is here. Uh, great life story she had. She was on the show as well. Others that have come through educated, empowered path. I appreciate it, empath rather. 
all of you for being here. I, I have to turn back to the book here. Um, future casting? That was one I had never heard of before. Exceedingly early in the relationship. They talk in we terms. Uh, you are put in the position to begin dreaming of a future together as they proclaim that you are the perfect mate. Oh, that just, I'm getting sick just reading it. And have searched, and have, I know, I'm being honest. Again, why my daughters are probably still single because they hear me talk like this. Uh, so, as they proclaim that you are the perfect mate and have searched for you their entire life. Bunch of hooey. So, 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 so future casting. It's like or, they're projecting. Or, or, future, or, or future faking. Like, I, I literally watched. I like the, the future video. casting, though. I, I uh -huh. watched the video yesterday on the future faking, which is future okay. casting. It's just promising. It's on YouTube, but it, it's promising you things like, oh, we're going to live happily ever after. Yeah, I, yeah, want, yeah. I want children. In fact, they yeah, yeah. marry you and they take you yeah. to go look for rings, and it never happens. They, take, they tell your children we're going to get married, but it never happens. But that promise keeps you hooked to them for wow. years sometimes. Oh, oh, we'll get married when he's done with this job. We'll, you know, all of these promises that keep you hooked with a narcissist are something we have to understand. And these things happen because they need to hold on to that person. Right. Well, they, they want to hold on to them as a supply. Someone's asking. Yeah, thank you. Recovery. Yes. Uh -huh. this, is, yeah. this is a demo, so you don't usually get that black thing, but it's not out yeah. yet, but it's, you can't make this shit up, and my name is Tracy A. Malone. It okay. will be on Amazon for pre-sale probably within the next week. Okay, so everybody, please, uh, make sure you make note of it, screenshot it, screenshot the show, share the show. Please make sure people are aware to get this book. Buy it in your brain now don't say i'll buy it later buy it say, consider it already done uh better to for, forever stay single and independent uh well that that has worked for many uh but what what people have come to find out is is that sometimes we need to maybe make better choices after we deal with the wounds that we as we talked about in the first segment dealt with and we're aware of the way others are trying to hurt us uh so hey you know, there's nothing wrong with marriage. It's, it's usually the people. <laughs> it's usually the people. There you go. You can get a, a sticker from Tracy. Tracy, you got stickers. You got bracelets. Oh, you got I flying have, monkeys. I have you got cards. A, wait, do it? the card again. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, so my I have a theory in the book to make you oh, not let what they're oh, saying my. to you bother you, which is we all have friends and family that do dumbass things. Like we can expect the brothers and 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 the cousins to lay on the couch after Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dinner. It's just what they do, dumbass. Of course they're gonna do it. It's the same thing every year for 50 years, right? We have to realize that the tricks that the narcissist is pulling are yeah. exactly the same. It's like Groundhog Day. Of course they're gonna wow. do it. That's of course a good they're one. gonna fight for that. Of course they're gonna say you're a bad person. Uh. It's part of their strategy. You have to know what their goals are. We talk a lot about that in the book, understanding your goals and theirs. Because if their goal is to pay you less money, that means that they'll probably try the strategy of calling you a bad parent so that they can get more time and potentially pay you less. The strategy is the same, to stay the center of attention no matter what they have to do and to cause as much havoc that mm -hmm. they felt they've had in their life or that they're experiencing on their their external world or whoever they pick as a victim or as prey. Right. And, and so, for example, like in your book, the terminology section, uh, you talk about, uh, well, please allow me. I'm just going to read this. Narcissistic rage. Narcissists despise any challenge or insult. And when that happens, they begin spewing insults and becoming physically and emotionally aggressive with their partner. You have life experiences in the book that deal with that, yes? Mm -hmm. Lots of them. How does a person navigate around narcissistic rage? How can they get a benefit from your book or just information you can just drop a little bit right now before you have to go? Well, understanding um, that this is a dumbass thing, of course they're going to do it. <laughs> it takes out some of the power uh. of them doing it because it's not that shock. 
it's like, oh yeah, they always that, wait. And I'm speaking from a place of far, far up here of not, you know, looking down on it. When you're in the fire, when you're in the, the situation, it's not as easy to just go, oh, of course they're going to do it. It's not like that. I'm not trying to belittle what you're going But eventually through. a person will move the way you're talking right now. So there that's, is hope. So, so don't think just because you're in the muck and mire of it at the beginning, everybody, because a lot of beginners dealing with this journey are watching this channel. You're making a very good point. I get you. It's like yeah. if you see me laugh or we're talking about it, we're removed from it per se. But there is hope. There is hope. And it really, I've seen it in my support groups where the light bulb just goes off and they're like, yeah. oh, oh, God, I can put this down. <laughs> I've been carrying it for so long. I didn't know it. Yeah. Oh, it's, true, just, yeah. it's a beautiful thing to watch them get to that place yeah. of not letting them bother you. I have a quote over here yeah. on my desk, which I'm, I'm not going to pull the card out, but it does say, there's a lot of life after I don't give a shit. As you can <laughs> see, I'm clear. Um, you are, you are, you, are you, you, you make me laugh. You remind me of, of how my father described his friends in Arkansas when he grew up. They just like, you just sit around and just say exactly what they think. And it's, you know, that's what the narc doesn't want to hear. They don't want someone like you in their presence. And this is what we need. We, we need you saying what you said right now. You, when they see you don't really care anymore, they lose a lot of power, huh? The game is over. It's like, oh, the game okay, is over. Okay. Supply, that's no fun. Oh, God, I was getting so much supply from this. Um, because they are, the supply to them is learning that they can emotionally still get to you. If they're sitting there doing these things and you're going into this trauma, it's like a win for them. And that's the supply that they 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 want. That's so pathetic. Yes. <laughs> okay, I have I have to read this to you. Um, we have a little bit more time here. Uh, a few moments before uh, Tracy is going to have to go. Secure babies says uh, narcissistic rage can also be suppressed under the surface and manifest through passive aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How how does a person navigate that dealing with a person who's passive aggressive? From a narcissistic yeah. standpoint. That's that's the covert narcissist is going to be the one pulling it out in the more covert and passive aggressive way. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do we navigate the rage? Um, we understand it. We understand the truth about it as opposed to the lies that they're throwing at us. Again, mm -hmm. high view here. We are, you know, yeah, right. not in the living room having a face to face fight at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but understanding it and taking out the emotional charge that whatever they're doing and raging at normally puts you back into that cocoon of, of trauma, it's, it's understanding that that's not necessarily true and um, I don't have to hold that. I've got to let, learn to let go. It's not like, let it go. It's not that. It is. You have to, we have to learn to do it, you said. We, we have to learn and we have to practice it. I practice it okay. every single day. If there's something okay. that comes up and I've got to, oh, Okay, I'm, I'm doing the same process yeah. over and over. And yeah. I'm like, okay, that's gone. You know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, no, that's very, we're never that's important. Continue to learn and grow. So we're never, even if you, even if you over it, dealt with some wounds as you talked about in the first segment, and we're moving peacefully, minding our own business, it can resurface in any given direction. We have to hold true to the process. And maybe stop and take a moment and recognize I'm not letting this get to me. Right. Ignore now, it. I'm going to hold this little thermometer up. It says 83 degrees, <laughs> and I want to rage at my landlord right now. I want to go. I was, in the I was face. not going to bring it up because we talked about it before the show. But <laughs> I'm like, oh, but again, in life situations, this is not a relationship of of, of romance. This is a landlord. And, and I have to learn to let <laughs> things go. I have to protect myself. There's so much in there. Hey, let, me tell you, let, me, let me tell you right now. I told you I got friends. I got friends. I can get yeah. you. I can get you. Air, I, get you, I get your air conditioning work. You just can't tell them who made it happen because they may, they may link that back to me. <laughs> so uh -oh. I may end up being in a courtroom. <laughs> uh -oh. So if you see, if you see your landlord is walking with a limp, I got your air conditioning you covered. It's okay. <laughs> So, you know, oh my god well, that's got, hey, wait that's <laughs> kind of the worst kind of landlord to have that lives in california and has property somewhere else exactly. <laughs> so um i have to do a couple of things here real quick uh one uh everybody i love each and every one of you you know that but tracy is going to have to go she has clients and by the way if you want to be treated special 
uh, Tracy is so special. She took a, cl- took a client before the show. If she needs to go to go deal with a client, if you want to get on that client list, um, you don't have to wait for her to do another show. Uh, sign up to be a client with her. I am reading something on the screen. That's why I'm not looking at the camera, everybody. Education of the narc and their games is key. And as the target, mindfulness and emotional regulation is the key. Uh, the key for me was having you on today. I'm looking forward to doing something tomorrow. Everybody, look at your screens right now. Please. Nobody asked for it. That's why I'm doing it. Please, <laughs> look at the screen. Yes, Fadwa, ask for it. Um, you're getting a bunch of thank yous and love across the screen there for that, uh, for being here and for what you're doing. Tracy, you have an imp- have impacted a number of people. Uh, before she goes, a part of the book, keep this in mind, that glossary, or in other words, the terminologies of narcissism uh, and the definitions are great. She talks about smear campaign, triangulation, word salad. All of them are there. Don't waste your time. Get the book. Uh, everybody's saying, what is he looking at? Well, if you've been here, you know where I'm looking at different places for a reason. Hearts are flowing across the stream, uh, screen. They're streaming for you. Um, I would love to. I would well, love. Tomorrow, but I've got to I, go because my client's coming on yeah, in 30 seconds. I would love to keep her longer, everybody, but she has to go. So everybody, say goodbye to Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. They're saying it. Great title for the book. Love you, Tracy. Love you, everybody. See you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Right here with you.